All right, welcome back to the next segment. Building models from a photograph on plastic models by a regular dude. Here is where the project stands. As you can see, I've started adding some of the accessories. Um, I've started putting the fuel cans in place. <coughs> And according to the photograph here, from what I can see, some U.S. jerry cans here, and some German jerry cans here, hence the difference in color. So I've got the one glued in place precariously, and then these will go here. Thusly. <clears throat> and I will use some <clears throat> string to represent rope tied around these to keep them in place. Then here I've got another can and a couple of boxes of uh, rations that haven't been glued into place. Then I'll be adding some different uh, like stowage bags and stuff like that. I've got another tarp to put on here somewhere. Um, so that will take care of the stowage in the back. And as far as the turret goes, I've got the stack of tarps that will be lashed onto the side here. Then I have musette bags and such for the crew that will be lashed down on these ties here along the front edge in accordance to the photograph as well. It won't match exactly, but it will be, you know, really close. Uh, I've got the shells, the main gun ammunition cemented into place. I, uh, whoa, dropped the turret there. I got the, um, fire extinguisher installed. I've got the, um, breech block installed correctly. It was incorrect in the last in the last video. Um, so that will take care of some of that. Now, one of the other things that I need to work on is on the back left of the vehicle, you can see here there is a 50 caliber machine gun tripod that needs to be uh, assembled and hooked onto these bolts here. So, Earlier in one of the earlier videos, I showed this U.S. machine gun set from Academy. And the reason I got this is because it has a lot. It has obviously machine guns, but it also has a lot of tripods, either in use or folded. So this is the one I'm going to be using, as well as some ammo cans to put in the stowage in the back. So the Parts for that are here, the um, tripod, and then the parts for the ammunition cans. I'm going to put three ammunition cans on the back in the, in the stowage racks. So that is the part I'm going to work on right now. Some of the glue is still setting up on the uh, fuel cans and on the tarp, so I don't want to mess with those just yet until I... Uh, I don't want to mess with those until everything dries up really well. So in the meantime, I'm going to assemble these, clean them all up, assemble them, and get them painted. After I got all of the uh, stuff painted, I installed the rest of the fuel cans. I got this stuff is all secured. I added some ammo cans here. <clears throat> for the uh, 50 cal I installed the tripod and with the tripod I'm letting it dry right now as you can see the silver tie wire here is uh, um, still silver I just need to paint it but I wanted to get it in position and um, so that's all pretty much done uh, I used 
some of my uh, Abtalum 502 black to make a wash and then just discolored these boxes a little bit. They looked way too uniform so I just discolored them along the edges a little bit just to give it a little bit of difference than just that solid tannish brown color. And for the, instead of using a rope, like I had mentioned, I used some tape and I just used some regular Tamiya tape and I uh, cut it really narrow as you can see here. Painted it with, uh, let's see, U.S. dark green just to make it, I was going to use khaki but it was too close to this color, uh, the, the nuchal gelb. So I used the U.S. dark green, painted that, and then, <clears throat> as you can see, I have a little buckle there for the strap. And what I did, and this is why I never throw away even the worst parts. This is a tarp that came with one kit. I don't remember what kit it came with, but it's just, you know, it's horrible. Doesn't even look like a tarp really, but it had these straps with buckles on them. So what I did is I just used my X-Acto knife, I trimmed one of the buckles off, cleaned it up a little bit, et voila, I have a little buckle. So it's always good to keep this kind of stuff just for such reasons. So this has been uh, painted. I did a, a wash on it. Then I'm going to do a little bit of weathering. I've got this uh, duffel bag type thing that is going to go here. To kind of match the photo as well as a couple of these that I'm going to add straps to and put up here as it shows in the photo then these will go here and that will pretty much take care of this side of the turret uh, the other side of the turret I don't have anything to go by so I'll just hang a couple more bags on there crew bags uh, something similar to these but with different shapes just so it'll, to break it up <coughs> So, let's see, and then on the other side of the hull, I am going to be using this pre-molded. This was in the, <clears throat> excuse me, to me a U.S. accessory set. It came with fuel cans and tarps and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, it's actually a pretty decent looking. It's in one of the newer molds. Um, I can't remember what year it is. It might be 98, I'm not sure, but it's a little bit better than the older ones, especially better than stuff like this. But I like the sag of it, and the straps actually match these mounting points here. So I'll be able to uh, use some thread to like tie it on or something like that. But it needs to be painted, washed, and weathered. And that should pretty much do it for the extra accessories. Then once that is done, I will be able to... Uh, work on tracks but I'm going to have to order some uh, tracks as I mentioned in my last um, update on this kit uh, the tracks that I was going to use just got destroyed and then I have these Tamiya tracks here that came with the kit that aren't bad but and I was going to use them just to just use them and be done with it but they don't match the photograph so I'm not going to use them I'm going to save these for another project um, they're the uh, gluable styrene type stuff but styrene doesn't glue them or the, uh, to me, extra thin that does not glue these. So I'll have to uh, use super glue like I had to use to put the two segments together for each side. So, waiting for tracks. Got to put the stuff on the turrets. Then I can start working on some figures to put on it. And then I also need to uh, uh, put, you know, like a branch kind of a bush caught right here uh, to simulate what is on the photograph as well and uh, that should pretty well take care of it I will be doing um, a light misting of a dust color to uh, get it kind of you know a little dirtier looking without getting too much of the uh, wetness over sprayed but just to kind of fade it out a little bit more to match the photograph. So that is pretty much it for now. I will uh, work on these tarps and stuff and get those painted 
and show you how I'm going to tie them onto the side here as well as the extra gear. One more thing I want to talk about here real quick. Um, <clears throat> I need to uh, work on a little bit of weathering on these tarps. Now, having dealt with heavy green tarps like this before, um, they really, on the outside edges, they really seem to get worn down and faded along the creases and stuff like that. And <clears throat> the, the creases tend to, in my experience, tend to repeat themselves. So like when you fold something up again, I mean, you get a pattern when you fold these things up. You fold them up, you roll them up, you're going to have the creases are going to be kind of the same. So those creases and stuff are going to wear pretty well. And this is an example right here. I've got it. I've already weathered this one a little bit. And I'll show you how I'm going to do it. But it's not just the solid green anymore. And all these wrinkles and ridges are all highlighted. Um, really nice. This is kind of a practice piece here. And it works pretty nice. And what I use, and I've been wanting to use this, but, you know, a lot of people don't like um, this product for whatever reason, but it really seems to, uh, I like the way it works. I saw somebody demonstrate it on a figure's jacket back, and I like the way it looked. And that's these, to me, a Weathering Master uh, sets. It's kind of like a, almost like it looks like a little makeup kit almost. Um, it's semi-wet material, adheres well, won't run in surrounding areas. Use included tool to apply, perfect for adding a touch of extra detail to finish models as well. And this one has sand, light sand, and mud. And they have it at a local store, wasn't very much, got 40% off, so I thought, you know what, it's worth trying it. And as you can see, you got, you know, these three different uh, colors here, sand, light sand, and mud. And the light sand um, imitates that canvas fading that I was talking about. So this comes with it. It's got a uh, like a little makeup sponge deal and a little brush. And uh, all I did was just rub it around in this um, stuff, get some on the uh, the brush, and then um, you should be able to see it's pretty well monochrome right now. And just with a little crazy hair sticking out there, just with a little like a dry brushing motion you get those edges and it really makes it uh look i mean you could do the same thing with dry brushing but this is a dry material or semi-dry anyway or semi-wet as it says now you can see this brush probably isn't gonna last because it looks like the bristles are already coming out but any uh stiff short brush like that would work but just And it really catches the texture of the material. And especially on this tissue, you can see, hopefully, that it is really making the, uh, the texture, it's really accentuating the texture. Accentuating. That was kind of, I almost bumbled that. But I like the way it looks. I really do. And it looks like uh, canvas tarps and stuff that I have dealt with. I have a few items in my collection. Um, this heavy canvas material. Uh, one's a duffel bag. One is a uh, entrenching tool cover. And this simulates it really well. So that is what I'm going to use for these. So I'm going to continue on getting this stuff weathered up. And then I can... Uh, Think about putting them onto the turret. As you can see, I've got the tarps attached to the side. I've got one string I left loose so I can show you what it looks like before and after. So, what I do, as I mentioned in one of my earlier videos, I bought Voyager model. TE-057 World War II U.S. military vehicle hooks and what they are is they are these hooks right here and this is this is what they look like this is the uh, 
um, the jig to shape them into a handle hook type thing and hopefully you can see right here that it is indeed a loop instead of the molded on type like uh, right here so by doing that you can add to the realism of the way you tie your stuff down which is what I did here so I got my three tarps together as they are on the uh, the vehicle and this one is sitting away from the vehicle because it's just laid on top because that's the way it looks in, in the uh, in the photograph I'm using and so what I did careful to line up these uh, straps here as close as possible to the hooks um, I just threaded them through the loops left them laying across like this then I glued the <coughs> using some gel super glue glue these in place let that set up really good and then all I did was just pull them around and tied them and then when I tied them I'll show you the first part right here when I tied them like this I figured out where the knot was going to be and I left it loose then I take just a little dab of this gel and put on to the knot pull it tight before it cures up and let it sit for a minute that way it pulls the string tight hopefully you can see in here against the hook so you know you don't want a saggy piece of string there because then it won't look realistic because there is pressure and weight on that rope so it will be taut so that's the way I did that so I'm gonna go ahead and do this one then I will move on to hanging the um, the uh, musette bags on the side and I will show how I do that as well I've got all the uh, tarps and um, musette bags, duffel bags, all that stuff is attached, as well as the tripod, and everything has been installed in the back. Now, just a quick uh, um, notation here these are the tissue paper tarps that I made, this is a plastic one. Now there's not too big of a difference between the two, but this is another plastic, like pre-molded Tamiya tarp, and as you can see, it doesn't look near as realistic as these here. And I was going to make a different one, but I thought I'd leave this one on here just as a comparison so you can see what it looks like, the difference between this and the handmade ones uh, they just they really just turn out a lot better they look a lot more like fabric as opposed to molded plastic and the milliput some people use milliput or other two-part epoxy putties to make uh, tarps like that as well and I've not been successful in doing that just because it ends up looking like this it looks more like plastic instead of cloth now I think if one were to take like say a t-shirt or something and impress it onto the milliput or whatever putty while it's still pliable it would give it that texture that you need for um, you know a more realistic look but the tissue paper ones I think look the best um, with my abilities so anyway those are done everything is tied down properly I was gonna do kind of a step-by-step -step deal um, in my last segment I was showing how I attached the, the uh, straps and my fingers were getting in the way and it wouldn't have been visible on camera so I'll just kind of explain it. I basically just lay out some tape, cut thin strips to the uh, scale size I want for the strap. I attach one side, loop it through the photo etch hooks or contact points here, pull it through and stick it on the back of the musette bag or whatever 
let it stick good. Then I add a little bit of thin super glue to give it a really good bond. Then I take a bit of the gel super glue and put it on the back of the item. Pull it tight so the strap looks like it has weight. It's not just a loose loop. And pull it tight. Hold it in place while the gel super glue sets up. And when you let go, it looks like it's actually hanging there, not just sitting on top. Did the same thing basically with this duffel bag or kit bag, whatever you want to call it, except you used a string for that to represent like, you know, heavy twine or rope and just connected it to the back, pulled it tight. And that way it looks like it's, you know, the weight of the bag is pulling it taut. So that is basically the way I did it. After I got that done, I did a little bit more weathering on the side with the <clears throat> Ultimate Weathering Wash by Ultimate Modeling Products. Uh, applied that in two different colors. I used the light dirt and mud. Applied that, wiped it down with a stiff brush. Then once that cured up, dried really well. Then I gave a uh, mist coat of Tamiya XF57 buff, thinned really heavily and just dusted on to kind of tie everything together and kind of homogenize it so it's not so, you know, stark differences between the different elements, including the sandbags and stuff like that. But I kept it to the upper surfaces and did not get it on the running gear because it's supposed to be wet looking. And it dulled down some of the, the tones of the colors that were just a bit too bright. So, with that, the, the main vehicle is pretty much done. The only thing I need to do is tracks. And I'm having to uh, source some tracks for this thing. So, I'm going to have to come back to that. So, in the meantime, while I'm doing that, I'm going to begin working on the figures. And I'll give you a brief explanation of what I'm doing with the figures. As you can see here, I've got a lot of arms and some hands and stuff like that. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to duplicate as closely as possible the poses of the figures um, in the photograph. So I'm having to modify the figures a bit. And what I'm doing is I'm, I've got a container full of body parts arms legs torsos lay you know heads and then associated gear to go with it so what I'm doing is I'm going through those and getting parts that I think will be able to replicate the poses I want. Now the arms that are supposed to go on this this figure is this one here that's supposed to be holding binoculars and this one here that's kind of resting his arm on whatever he's leaning up against. So those aren't matching this figure here that I'm working on. So what I had to do was find some arms that had more of an upright posture to them and these are the ones that I have found that most closely duplicate that as you can see I've already got one glued on I have to do a little bit of filler work here get that smoothed out then this arm here same thing and as you can see there's no hands so what I do is I cut the hands off and I learned this trick in um, one of Shepard Payne's books where he talks about figures one of the things you can do to help make figures a little more realistic is you take you cut the hands off and then you hollow out the ends of the sleeves that way you don't end up with you know a solid blob where it looks like an arm is just molded in you know molded into the sleeve and by doing that you can hollow this out so when you put the hand in it looks like a hand that's actually coming out of a fabric jacket so I've got the hands for that, and they'll be kind of resting like this. This one will be kind of on the edge of the tank, and the other one will be kind of like this, if it all works out. But so far, so good. So that's what I'm doing for the figures. So I'm going to continue putting these together, 
working on those and then I can start uh, painting them to put into the vehicle. So with that I'm going to call this video quits and come back next time and show a little more progress hopefully on the figures and hopefully I will have tracks. So it may be a little bit longer between videos this time while I wait to uh, source some tracks. So as always if you have any questions or comments post them below in the comment section hints, tips, anything else, I would appreciate it. So, as always, thanks for watching Plastic Models by a Regular Dude, and I will see you all next time.